The guitar is the thing that can most easily let you know what I think and what I feel. You know, you can make combinations of things that just can't happen in any other way. The guitar is a huge piece of that that I can at least completely understand and contribute to this total emotional thing that happens. It's my preferred method of communication. As soon as there was consciousness, guitars were around. As soon as I had enough brain to comprehend it, I was completely fanatical about it. My mom played, my father played a little bit too, and my mom was in a band for a little while with some, with some guys. That was a formative thing, seeing, seeing them play, because these were, these were music school students. They were, they were very good musicians. My dream at that point was to play electric guitars. I mean, that's kind of the trajectory of the guitar. There was never a point when it wasn't part of my life. It, it, you know, there's pictures of me strumming on my dad's guitar, just kind of boing, boing. It, it, it was ever present in my life. And I never for a minute wanted to do anything except be a guitar player. I started playing when I was nine, so I um, I learned by playing uh, songs from the American Graffiti soundtrack. So first songs I learned were like you know Chuck Berry songs and that kind of stuff. You know stuff '60s music. That was that was the first things I learned on the guitar. These dudes. You know, this was hours and hours of playing these over and over and staring at these covers and just, you know, that was really all I listened to, the Beatles. And then a neighbor said, here, you should check this out. This is interesting. You might like this. And so when I was 11, somebody gave me a copy of Absolutely Free by the Mothers of Invention, the second record, the one after, after Freak Out. I think that's what opened the door to punk rock. There was no internet. There was only a couple of fanzines around. There was really nowhere to even find out where these bands were coming from. So you just had to buy, you just had to find a record. You just kind of go, hmm, Circle Jerks, Group Sex. I'm gonna buy that, see if that's any good. And it was, this is one of the greatest records in, in ever. This song, Red Tape, that's probably the, the raddest punk drum performance ever. He's, I mean, you don't even know what's going on. It's amazing. Anyway. This is my other big, most probably important band. I learned everything from these people. That's what the that's what punk rock was like. Punk rock spoke to me, the person, and the confusion of you know entering teenage life and uh, so it, it, it spoke to me I felt like it was a generational connection and it was like okay the, these are the people that that I understand I, I understand what these people are saying and what they're feeling I identify with it so like so many other you know 14 year old kids you know you start your own band and you start just writing songs saying what you want to say musically I had things I wanted to say. M maybe not so much lyrically, that didn't really come for me very easily. Still doesn't. But musically, it, it definitely did. And so, yeah, as, as soon as I had the opportunity to join Descendants, that was, that was mind-boggling mind anyway, because I was such a huge fan of the band. So to get to do that and just dive in the van and live that life completely, five bucks a day, drive all night, you know, get to the next place, sleep a few hours, load in, 
it was pure, purely, it was incredibly exciting. Well, coffee, you know, that's, yeah, <laughs> that guy said. Coffee, it's just part of the Descendants thing. It's not unusual for us to walk into a place like this one here and go, could I have six espressos, just that in here? And you know, and then we do that and then we get up there and just play fast and that's, that's part of our thing. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good. <laughs> Can I get you? Can I have six shots of espresso in like a small cup to go? Yeah. Awesome, thank you. I like this place, they didn't even flinch. Normally, some people are like, really? So this is, this is the pre-show ritual right here. You know, the, the, one of these and, you know, warm up for a while, stretch, kind of get your, get your energy on and go out there and let her rip. I just remember seeing Music Man guitars around, and of course, if you went into a shop, it'd be, you know, a sea of the known quantities of guitars, and then, you know, usually a couple of Music Mans. And every time I picked one up, I was like, man, every time I play one of these things, it just feels solid. I, I ended up meeting some of the guys uh, on the Warp Tour in 97. They were, you know, coming with their little trailer every day, and I would stop by and play the guitars. And one day I asked them, hey, you know, could I maybe do a set with one of these one day? And so they said, yeah, absolutely. And they let me take one. And, and I played those guitars for 18 years. And then I remember seeing a picture of the Stingray, uh, which is the guitar you've seen me playing. Um, that it was a, it was a prototype um, with a fixed bridge. And um, knobs tended to be something I would just ram my knuckles into and I wasn't using them anyway. So I asked to just omit those entirely. And we just stripped the guitar down to the stuff that I really like. This may be my favorite guitar I've ever had. The thing that I've, that I've become most aware of over the course of time is that, is that music is part of a great continuum. And as far as, as my little tiny role in that over the course of time, you know, this is, this is it, it's just like, um, it's just like information passed down from one person to another and somebody takes the ball and runs with it. I was massively inspired by a bunch of people. I've, I've had the great fortune of inspiring a few others. That's, that's amazing. What a, what a cool thing to, get, you know, to be able to, to be part of something like that. It's a cultural force. If you'd have said to any of us, when we, when we were in our little bands, when the Descendants were off in their practice room and Massacre guys were off in their practice room and you know, all the other bands were off in theirs, nobody could have imagined that there would still be interest in this music 40 years on. That's just unfathomable. Music has that weird way of transporting you. You know, it's like time travel. Music's like time travel <laughs> sometimes, you know. We've been playing these same songs for a long time, many of them. I want to be stereotyped. I want to be classified. You know, some of these songs are 40 years old. They're coming up on, you know, almost 40 years old. And, and our response to playing it is still the same. It still makes us feel the same way to play them. It's not up there just like, yeah, give a shit. You know, it's not, that is not it for us. We're just, we're, you know, they mean a lot. You know, it's important. Someday, uh, you know, I'll be too old to do this physical commitment to the music, but, you know, uh, I couldn't do anything else. I never wanted to, I never tried to, I never made any plans for anything else. Wow. <laughs>